Okay, so the next framework that we're going to start up with is uh, the page object model design pattern. So page object model is uh, one of the best approach that most of the organizations are actually following. It is built up on your data data dri driven approach itself as in the data will still be read from uh, the, the third party Excel files or from the JSON files or from the XML files, right? So whatever that uh, so far we have seen in uh, the, the basic data driven approach like adding uh, utilities, creating uh, test cases and uh, then setting up listeners, right? and uh, then all the parameterization work the integration of test ng maven jenkins all these things will going to remain the same right just the change that will going to happen is uh, in your uh, test cases now what we were doing initially that our test cases like we have created test cases for open opening the account uh, logging with bank manager adding customer uh, uh, so what all test cases that we have created so far our business logic is actually defined within the test cases itself business logic as in over here the business uh, logic is clicking on the bank bank manager login button right so this is our test case as well as this is our specification the bank manager logging button is basically our specification and verify whether the user is able to successfully click on the bank manager login button is our test case so test case and business logic both are defined in the same uh, class itself right now what is the uh, like drawback of having test case and business logic both in the same class it's that uh, if there are any changes done in a specification let's say we are working in an agile environment where things keep on uh, changing very frequently our, our specification requirements keep on changing very frequently then what what we need to do if we have already written all the test cases if all and all of a sudden uh, the business requirement gets changed then we need to go to our test cases and and we need to update our business uh, uh, elements as well as in uh, if we were talking about this website itself uh, let's say I uh, go to way to automation and over here if we open the website that we have automated and data driven so let's say uh, if I click on bank manager login, one of the test case was adding a customer. So we were entering all these fields. Let's say five more fields got added over here. So what I'll go, I'll be doing is I'll, I'll go to my add customer test and uh, this is my test case and I'll be uh, adding uh, like four or five more lines to validate those fields as well, right? And uh, it may happen that uh, the same functionality of adding uh, a customer is accessed from five different interfaces, right? There are times when we have common functionalities available. Let's say if I talk about another application, this is uh, a Zoho.com application, a very popular uh, business uh, solution. Uh, it's basically a CRM based application. So let's say if I perform login and uh, if I log in to my account, so you can create a, a free trial account uh, on this application. You will find so many modules that you can practice, you can automate uh, it on. So let me show it to you. So we can go to a uh, different area like chat, CRM, sales, I'll go to CRM. And over here, uh, let's say I was talking about common functionality. If you take a look at the header section, right, I'm on home interface at the moment. If I uh, go to leads, the header section remains same. If I go to accounts, the header there's nothing changing on the header section right so if we follow the the, the normal data driven approach then uh, i'll i'll be creating a, a single class uh, for uh, validating like creating leads a, a single class for importing leads right a single class for uh, validating other elements on this page and maybe from uh, when i'm on a create lead test i want to go to accounts 
So I'll, I'll add a line uh, for clicking on accounts within the create lead test, right? And when I'm in import leads, I want to go to the accounts again, I'll add one line in import leads for clicking on accounts again, right? The same functionality we need to write in all the test cases every time, right? And let's say I'm, I'm on a leads page and I want to log out. I want to click over here and I want to sign out. I can sign out from here. I can sign out from accounts. I can sign up, sign out, sign out from contacts. Right, so I can do all these things. I can access this common functionality anywhere uh, from any interface. So instead of uh, writing it again and again, let's say if there is any change uh, in the requirement in the specification happen, if you have uh, like, if, let's say one more menu got added over here. So wherever you are validating menus in all the pages and all your test cases, you need to go over there and update that menu item everywhere in all the test cases. So that is where the page object model approach uh, that is very helpful that is very beneficial because it provides us such an abstraction layer uh, that wherever uh, the common functionality is accessed we can encapsulate the common functionality in all our uh, classes and those classes will not be related to test cases those will be business logic uh, classes like we will be taking out our business logics from our test cases from all the test cases that we have written, we'll be taking out business logics and we'll be creating, implementing a separate set of classes just for business and events. So that if there is any change uh, uh, required, if there is any change done in the specification, then our test case should not be impacted. If a test case is for adding a customer, it will always remain as adding a customer. Whatever going inside, uh, whatever elements that we are uh, accessing within that add customer test, if a, if a change is done in that element, then the test case will not be updated. Rather, we'll go to our business uh, classes and we will be updating our business classes accordingly. And if one of a, one particular common functionality is updated, if we are going to do update in one single class, that will be impacted in all other classes. So we need not to go into each classes wherever we have a logout functionality. We'll go to each class and update it over there. We'll be creating a lot of common functionalities for that. We will be creating a lot of common utilities and we'll be optimizing our code a lot. Right, that is what your page object model design pattern is, which is built up on your data driven approach itself. So data driven remains the same as we have at the rate test, as we have uh, at the rate uh, uh, like test and data provider, right, reading Excel sheet, whatever that we have seen so far, hash tables, all these concepts will gonna remain same. Right, data driven part will not gonna change, but the more uh, layers will be formed when we're gonna uh, create the page object model approach. So I'll be uh, taking this approach uh, in many ways as in we're gonna first get started with a very basic uh, page object model uh, basic concepts. We'll first be discussing about page object model basics. Right. And then on top of this, I'll uh, be merging this with uh, uh, data driven, data driven, right. And then I'll going to add a layer on top of it, which will be your page factories. So on top of it, I'll be adding uh, something that is page factories. So this will be page factories. Right, which is nothing, it's just, uh, it, it provides some annotation, some uh, extra functionality to our framework, which optimized our uh, code uh, a lot, right? And we'll be discussing about what page factories are. And then uh, we'll be adding more abstraction layer. We're gonna uh, convert uh, this framework and uh, like we'll be adding uh, N number of layers for our web elements, uh, for our keywords, right? So this, uh, I'm gonna name it as uh, one of the page object model extended. But before that, I'll be adding a layer of Cucumber BDD right so same framework 
we we can use uh, to write our uh, BDD test cases, right? So uh, we'll be using uh, Jerkin language and we'll be accessing our uh, business concepts from page object itself and then we'll be deriving it with the help of uh, Cucumber. And then on top of it, uh, another layer will be added that is uh, your page object model itself, uh, but it will be extended framework where you're going to see uh, a lot of data abstraction uh, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, utilities that uh, we're going to create. So that is what uh, the final output of this framework will be. Right, but we're going to start with very basic approach, right? Because uh, this is for the people who are working on the page object model for the very first time. They should be uh, familiar with how things works in page object model and page factories and cucumber. And then we will be forming up a very high level of a page object model that is used in the industries and then we'll be using all all the things that we have seen so far like jenkins we'll be using uh, maven i'll add uh, something on git uh, github as well in this project where we will be doing continuous integration right we're going to see all the mail api and the log4j api and the poi apis as well right so all these things uh, will remain uh, same as we have uh, used it in uh, our previous data driven framework. So this is what uh, we will be designing and this is going to be a very huge project, right? So let's see, uh, let's start with designing uh, the very first page object model uh, basic framework. 